Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Alton Park GT3 track guide from the Ultimate Track Guide series. Today we're in the Aston Martin and a lot of you asked me how do I get hold of the setups. We're in one of my good friends Des setup today. Um, the link will be in the description below. Go download it off a of set space. It's really great, absolutely fine to drive around here so get your hands on that while you can. If you haven't seen the GT4 track guide around Alton that I did a couple of weeks ago, then do click on the little card at the top right of the screen now. That'll take you to that one. If you haven't watched it, go watch it and then come back and take a look at this one. Like I said, Alton Park, super technical, really difficult chicanes. It's, it's one of those tracks which has a real bumpy ride. So if you're not subbed to the channel already, do so hit that bell icon. Let's dive into the lap. It's coming through the start finish straight then. It's not really a straight, is it? It's kind of a long left hand bend, not much time to think about anything. And we're immediately blessed with this braking zone, which is the change in colour in the white line here. Okay, so it's just after the grass starts to kink to the left. You can see the white line sort of fades where all the rubber has gone onto the, the left hand side of the track. That's your cue to start braking. Really, really simple. It's going to be a, a short short sharp jab on the brakes and then bleeding off them straight away because we need to start turning quite early even in gt3 with with all the area okay so you can see how we're still on the brake just bleeding off the brake trailing into the corner at this point and so the weight of the car is on the front of the nose so we need to go over this curb on the right hand side but not too much it's quite bumpy you need to have good good rebound and 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 bump damping here to uh, cope with the car and immediately you're you're on the power okay it's you need to stamp on the power here because you need the back end of the car to rotate round so you stay on the track okay so this is about the limit of the track um limits you will get a penalty if you go further this it's quite late in the corner which is important to see past the sign that says turn left and we're going to turn right and you're immediately faced with this Pirelli sign and, and hitting the breaking point, which is the green box in front of you, okay? So it's before the bump, before the Pirelli sign. That's really important. And it's it's you can brake hard to start with, but then you bleed off the brake straight away because you're going to need quite a lot of adjustment on the throttle and the brake through this corner. So you can see we're already down to half braking which is quite interesting because it's keeping that weight on the front of the nose. We keep rotating around the corner. We're adjusting on the throttle as well to keep the stability in the car. And you can actually go a little bit wider here than you can in GT4. In GT4, in the, in the lighter cars like the Alpine and the Janessa, I quite like to hug this corner a lot. So it doesn't matter too much on exit because you've got a lot of room to manoeuvre the car, right? In these GT3 cars, they're big, bigger. You need to concentrate on the exit and there's a, quite a bit of room you can use on the kerb on the outside. So technical first couple of corners let's watch them again in in sort of full speed so we're looking for the line color of the uh, white line change on the left hand side after this sign brake immediately trailing off to keep the weight on the nose hard on the power maybe drop down another gear than you think just to get the back end rotated into the right hand bend braking before the sign using your adjustment on the throttle and the brake to just see how you're getting on around that corner you can hug it tight you can not go too wide because you will slip off the track it's really important let's have a look at it from above because i think especially that second corner it really gives you the feel of how to go around it there's that color change in the white line you can see it really clearly from above it's um it's it's actually a really great breaking point and you can't quite see it in the wet but in the dry it's the one to have you can see where everyone's gone over the curbs here and we see how late in the corner that we're actually going over that curb if you if you if you cut if you go wide earlier than this on the exit, then you're probably going to get a track warning just to let you know. Over to the right hand side of the track, then staying on the right hand side, breaking before the sign. You can see that we're a little bit wider than we would be in GT4. Any wider than this, any wider than the, the dark line, you're probably going to start to slip into that gravel trap or, or find yourself struggling to get back in. So it's finding that balance, I urge you to play with that sort of how wide you can go there immediately faced with this fast left-hander. It's a deceptively difficult corner, but our eyes are turned to this little green spot here before. It's just the corner of the tarmac and the grass by those two chevron red and white signs. This is your turning point. This is your braking point. It's an immediate dab on the brakes. This is the most I break. You can see how little I'm actually on the brakes here, which is, I think, surprising for a lot of people. It's just a quick get the weight on the nose, get the car turned in, and then we're... It's not hope, but you're, you're feeling for when you can get on the power as early as possible. You can see I have a couple of stabs at it because I'm a bit nervous, and immediately... 
and this is the same in GT4. Again, if you haven't seen that one, the link at the top. Um, we're looking for this grassy sort of uh, dirt mark on the left-hand side. There's this orange marker, but who wants to be looking out the left-hand window when you're just going to be going through a right-hand turn, okay? So looking for that dirt mark, we're going to be braking hard, and we're going to be staying towards the inside of this corner. It's really, really... Uh, basically, the tyre is on the kerb, but it's not quite on the kerb because it's quite bumpy. And what we're looking to do here is, is stay, stay tight, get on the power nice and early so the back end of the car rotates around, use the diff of the car. There's a bump on exit that we need to go straight over. So we need to be turned and being straight as we go over that bump. So just there, you need to have the steering slightly straighter so you can get a good clean exit over the top of there. Looking for the pylon on the right hand side again, if that disappears, there's a little dirt track just below it where, you know, the marshals have come and got it and they've scraped the grass up and all that sort of thing, right? Um, that's your braking point. We're going to be braking in as straight a line as possible into here. We're going to let off slightly as we turn to the left over the kerb so the car stays nice and stable so we're not putting any excess forces on it that we need to uh, we don't need to and then we're going to jab on the brakes again to turn to the right hand side so let's look at it slightly off the brakes as we let the car roll over this kerb so everything's nice and stable and settled put it on a few frames and we're back on hard on the brakes to just a jab this gets the weight on the nose again i say it all the time get the car turned smooth on the power you can go over that kerb a little bit on the left hand side but you don't really need to if you've got the rotation let's look at it again but let's let's go in in slow-mo right so coming off the brake as we turn and then back on to get the the nose digging into the ground on the back end rotated round almost think you're doing a bit of an endo in a bike right and you, you're sort of getting it bounced around the corner that's the way i sort of think about it let's watch it in full speed again quick dab on the brakes thinking about when you can get back on the power looking for the dirt mark on the left hand side hugging the track as much as you can hard on the power to get the car rotated a little bit straighter over that bump looking for the pylon on the right hand side we're going to be braking as straight as possible off the brakes back on get that car rotated round and then nice and smooth on the power as you come up here loads of room to maneuver as you go over um the, the, through the left right there you, you don't have to clob the curbs unless you didn't set yourself up particularly well for it in the first instance a lot of the time people say oh how do you get that rotation it is literally the car sort of being shocked into it you know shocking the system you can see how tight we are here at the apex of this really quite long and difficult hairpin it's all about staying in the groove this is where that bump is then we're just past it it's just where the road's a little bit cleaner there's so the tires aren't in contact you can see we need to be straighter as we go over this bump to straighten our steering so that's where you have to get that rotation early in the corner to be straighter there you can't be still turning there as it will unsettle the car and this is a really interesting one because if you're being overtaken, and we don't talk about this too much on the track, guys, but you really, really don't want to find yourself battling through this on the, you know, being in this red zone on the right hand side, sort of on the outside, I guess, with this one, which becomes the inside or the outside for the other one. It's just, it's just a nightmare being, you know, overtaken through this. So getting that corner before nailed so you're not vulnerable into the chicane is really key. And especially into the, what is another overtaking opportunity through into the, the next chicane. So really, really important chicane and it's complex to get right. Got a couple of great breaking points. We've got the sign on the left-hand side. We've also got this uh, Marshall's post. I'll put a green spot on there. If the sign goes, use the Marshall post. To be honest with you, I think the Marshall post is actually a better um, sort of breaking point, though the sign's easier to see, obviously. Going to be hard on the brakes. We're going to get the car rotated on the right-hand kerb. You can hit the kerb just a little bit. I do on this lap, not too much, though. And then immediately over to the left-hand side, you can see that you can actually cut this a little bit more than you probably think. Get the car rotated left, smooth on the power, just gliding up to full power, and then you're immediately looking for this divot in the road ahead of you. So it's right above the number two here, just in line with that orange sort of marker. And that's your turning and let-off marker here. So we're not going to be braking here, just going to be letting off the power get the front end, let it bite, and then we're smooth on the power, not taking too much on that kerb on the exit because you will end up in the fence on the right-hand side of the track for once. 
Really difficult complex through here then, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. There isn't really a breaking point, so I've just paused it here to just, you know, get your bearings. You've got the sign on the right-hand side, we've got the tree on the left, but it's more of a feel corner, this, and we're going to be dragging the brakes in quite long. You need to keep the car rotating, and actually I, I go slightly too wide on the exit at this corner. Well, slightly too wide of the apex um, on the second phase of this corner. So you need to remember to just be patient, let the front of the car just bite. You can feel, you can see we're still on the brakes here and we're just feeling for that grip. We're just you know, adjusting the car on the brake or on, on the throttle just to, just to see when the front's gonna really dig into the road and that's your cue. I talk about this a lot when I'm coaching as well. That's your cue to know that you're free to be full power and start to straighten up your steering. You see, we're just a tad wide there, but we get away with it. The setup's really great there. Good work, Des. Um, and we're coming into the final corner complex. We've got a sign on the left-hand side, which is okay, but you can see just before it, there's a little sort of white, almost dusty mark. It's difficult to spot right, but if the sign goes, it will go probably in a race, and that white mark is quite a good one to just to feel your way through that corner. You know you can break slightly after it. Sometimes the sign stays there, right? Getting in nice and tight. Don't go over the curb. As soon as you're free of that late apex, that's your time to really start building on the power slowly and gradually remembering you've got a lot of runoff a lot of people will floor it and end up opposite locking out of that last corner which is just going to lose you momentum it's going to scrub the tires all sorts of bad you can get away with it don't get me wrong but if you build on the power nice and smoothly then you'll be you'll be absolutely grand through there so looking at this sort of complex and really difficult sort of chicane to, to get right or triple chicane almost it's all about the exit through here so staying left on the entry and then cutting back as hard as you can while maintaining some good speed again the left hand sort of cut back and then right hand immediately it seems to be a theme around here just gauging where the front of the car is you can see we were slightly wide there but we get away with it there is quite a lot of runoff there and even if you do go too wide you've got you know it's grass and you're in a straight line so you're all right you can see we apex to slightly later there and that's your cue to go sort of 80 90 percent power trying to avoid as much opposite lock as possible and away you go for another lap let's look at it in full guys if you're not sub then then hit the button because this is this is the sort of thing we do on this channel is we really sort of it's an ed, trying to educate we're trying to feel our way through these tracks and learn together as a group of people along with the discord as well before the sign gauge how wide you can go make sure you get that just adjustment in the steering just to get the nose into that corner and away we go down for a little bit of a breather looking for the signs on the right hand side dab on the brakes get the nose in feel for when you can get back on the power it's not it's not a big deal if you can't get back on the power too hard there staying nice and tight get the back end rotated by stepping on the power nice and early straight over that bump looking for the pylon straight under your braking come off the brakes go back on get the car turned then straighten that steering straight away let the diff carry you round the left hand and the, and the right hand on the left hand side of that corner looking for the marshal post on the left hand side now we break straight line take a bit of curb if you want to you must avoid it though if you're nervous looking for the little divot now we turn let off the brakes you can cut it a little bit more than that but we're nice and smooth up the hill into the awkward sort of left double right phased corner here so over to the right hand side of the track pull it to the left stay left break coming off the brake straight away dragging it into the corner waiting that that for the front of the nose just to bite in that's your cue to floor it you've got a lot of room on the exit now we're looking for the sign or just before apexing nice and late trying to build that power straighten up the steering use the room that you've got on the exit to go away for another lap of alton park one more thing guys let's look at it from above because i know you guys love this view. I think when I'm doing the coaching, a lot of people ask for this view, and I can understand why, because you really get to see where on the track you're positioning the car. It's quite different from you know people driving different views and all that sort of thing, so it's really key, especially around this one. You can see that we're sort of in the middle of the track, and then we have that cutback phase right on the apex. It's quite a late apex. And then again, through this right hand, you can see how much speed we carry. It forces us almost to the right-hand side of the track on exit. And we're not trying to get back over to the left-hand side entirely. You can break on the inside there, which I think a lot of people misinterpret. They try and take uh, not enough speed through that left-hander to try and break on the left-hand side. You can get away without doing that. All about getting this car rotated in the second, in the right-hand phase of this corner. Remember, don't get in a battle around there. Make sure you nail that hairpin before because you won't be vulnerable and then 
Again, similar with this one. This is not really about the first two corners. It's all about just maintaining speed through here, but getting the car over to the left-hand side of the track so you can cut back effectively up this hill. Really key to get a good run because it is a hill. You will be vulnerable. It's a tough overtaking maneuver, but you will be vulnerable up here if you don't get a good run. Really key to let the nose bite through here. You see, I'm just a touch wide other you know other people have been on the curve there which is really the ideal line into the final corner one of the most uh well optimistic sort of overtaking places on the track but if you nail the braking it's difficult to do there again super difficult to overtake there's the ultimate track guide of alton park in gt3 guys i hope you enjoyed that sub to the channel if you're not already because we're all about this sort of thing here hit the bell icon and a quick reminder that we have loads of other track guides I'm working my way through them almost through GT3 and I've got a couple of GT4 ones that I'm getting through as well. And if you want this set up, link in the description below. Go and give it a go. Let me know how you get on. Till next time, guys. I'll see you then.